Hello everyone. Thanks so much for joining me here today as we get to talk about one of my favorite subjects, comic books. My name is Jose. I love comic books. I love talking about them. I love sharing them with you. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like. Links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the Marvel fan site that'll have plot synopsis and character bios for these issues. So what I am doing right now is I'm taking some of my old videos from when I started this channel and I'm re-editing them and releasing them in a collection and I'm going to be removing the video. Some of the stuff uh, was just me learning the ropes and making a lot of mistakes and I just I'm kind of unhappy with some of the introductions and stuff that I did in those videos. So these are going to go into the playlists um, that I currently have, and then I'm going to be removing and deleting those older videos. So we're going to be doing the, uh, uh, Ballad of Beta Ray Bill. Thor 337 was actually my very first video that I ever did. So, um, as I re-edit, a lot of the stuff that I did on that video is actually still there. Um, but I removed a lot of the introductions and, and stuff like that, but also all these videos. So I'm going to be doing that with a lot of my older videos to try and streamline so that this channel kind of all starts to, uh, look and sound, um, the same. So, um, I hope you like it and, um, I hope you enjoy kind of, um, these videos kind of like in a trade paperback um form per se putting all these uh things together so i hope it i hope it's something that you enjoy thor 337 from 1983 better ray bill shattering the old logo i actually um, grew up, I never collected Thor prior to Walter Simonson, and I, I was unaware of what the old logo even looked like, so it is pretty cool and creative, uh, starting 338, we will have a new logo here with this beautiful iconic cover again, uh, featuring Beta Ray Bill in his first appearance. Or 337 starts with a thread that will be done throughout a lot of his run in which it's it starts out um you at this time can't really tell but it, it, something's getting forged right here um one of the the things that I love about Simonson um I also draw in my spare time um I do this in my spare time this is my first video but just decided I just wanted to do something really cool and just share like I said love with comic books but these uh, how how you see the designs of like um flames and these things those are, those are very he's he does this in all his work um, it's it's just so cool. He does a lot of Kirby Crackle. He's a uh, even though I don't particularly care for Jack Kirby, I find his art to be stiff. I do respect how he was able to um, inspire others, and Simonson is definitely inspired by Jack Kirby. And you can you can see, but Simonson's work is just so so dynamic and so good so as you can see here something um is uh, uh you know how the um they're shaping iron um and there's the hands but you can't really see what else but it's something big cosmic because you see here planets and moons so you know it's it's a it's a something that is being done um so And here you can, he, he's not revealing. The, the reveal will come at a later time. He's just kind of whetting your appetite. Um, as as uh, something's happening, something's being built, but he is not saying what it is. Um, 
again, look at the this. I'm um, just how he does things. It's just he's amazing. Um, this uh, trade paperback collection here has been recolored, uh, more modern, using more modern colors. But this, um, it's 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 very well worth um, to get this issue. This issue. Um, can cost you a pretty penny right now. It's about a hundred dollars on on eBay. Um, you can probably find it for less, but most comic book stores uh, sell it for about a hundred and twenty-five to hundred and fifty, um, unless it's graded, and then it can probably cost you more. But um, the trades are just as good, so you can admire this beautiful art. And then look at this, just. Boom, and then of course I should have said doom. Um, this, like I said, is going to be a lingering plot line for um, several issues. Um, as something's happening, and and Simonson is building something. You know, it's not all just one and done, and and off you go. He does. He wants to build a, an epic, and he I think does a wonderful job building that epic. So. Um, so I won't I won't reveal who he is, but of course this this issue is from the 1980s. So you can probably go back if you want to and see see who it is if you're interested. Um, this is from I believe 1983 when uh, this came out. So just so beautiful. So. Um, that was that. This is actually here now, the actual start of the story. Uh, before we go, here's the, uh, this dude skateboarding. It is just amazing how he creates movement. It's just, look at this. Simonson is just such a master. Um, everything's so simple yet so elegant. I just absolutely love it. Um, he, he just gives you enough that you can make the information. He doesn't try to overwhelm you with ultra details. Just every mark he makes is just right on. It's just beautiful. Um, and this, for those of you who are who don't know, back when Stanley and Jack Kirby created Thor, he did have an alter ego. Um by the name of Don Blake. Um, he's a doctor. And he couldn't walk. He had a limp, so he had to have this cane. Um, so he's out here in Central Park, um, gets hit by a Frisbee. Um, just um, Simonson, like I said, his marks. Um, this is just his ink line, everything, everything about his art. I just love that thick. I'm a very partial to artists with the nice thick line. And if you can t just take a look here, it's just wonderful. Very thick and thin. I mean, right here, you can almost s just barely see a line right there. Um, but just, it's so wonderful. So he is being taken... Um, by two gentlemen here and uh, put in this car and uh, obviously they don't know what's going on but look again look look at his art uh, I just want to do one last thing the lettering here is done by John Workman who is an amazing letterer he is one of the top five greatest letterers of all time. Um, back in the day, they hand lettered these, so these were done in hand letterings. I also want to say I own the artist edition for all these. So the artist edition is um, where you just see the pen and ink, um, no colors, no nothing. It looks just like how it was drawn. It's beautiful. And look, look at this, just perspective it's just uh, his the shots that he uses it's just amazing um the, I, like i said these the lettering here is not done by walter simonson it is also done by john workman right here this is all drawn by the letterer who who does all 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 the lettering here it's just wonderful one of the things that i love and i use it in my own work um 
I just do it for fun. Um, I, I have a Twitter account and an Instagram account. I just post my stuff for free, kind of working on a on my own little comic book that I'm doing for fun. Um, I stole the S because I think John Workman does such a wonderful S. So I, I stole the S. Um, I also stole the um, E. If you, I, I know it looks like a regular E, but when you look, the this is actually higher. Um, I, I took his E. Um, a couple, um, the R, look at this, the R of his, I also took it. So I, I grabbed a couple of his letters and I used them. Um, I hand letter, um, I, well, uh, sort of, I use, I, I work on an iPad, but I actually letter in the iPad. I don't use the, uh, the, uh, fonts that come with it. I actually grab a, uh, a uh, a layer. I create a layer and I just letter it myself. So this here, so he's in this car and the driver, for those of you who just watched the um, Marvel movies, this is Nick Fury. Nick Fury back in the day was a white dude. Um, Marvel has retconned him. I believe Nick Fury, they have Nick Fury now. Um, as someone that looks like Samuel L. Jackson, um, and it is his son. He had a relationship, and um, he, the new Nick Fury, is black um, and has the same name. Uh, he named him Nick Fury, Nicholas Fury. Um, he is a colonel. He, in the movies, he's a general, I believe, but he, in the comic books, he's always a colonel. He is the head of Shield. Um, and he needs Thor. He knows who Thor is. He knows he knows who Don Blake is, and that Don Blake is Thor. So he says he needs him. So how he became Thor is he used his stick and he smashed it against the ground. In this case, he uses the bottom of the car and uses it to turn into Thor. Um, again, just look at how he, he does, uh, this is also another trope, the letters, he does the borders and then the letters just kind of go over it, covering the rest of the border. It's just, uh, it's very cool. You can see it right here and right here. Um, I try to do that as well. Um, he inspires me more than just about more than anybody. Walter Simonson is my number one inspiration. He is my most favorite um, of all time. Um, two others are Tom McFarlane and Jim Lee. Tom McFarlane doesn't draw too much, unfortunately. Jim Lee does, but um, he, he not as much as he could. But Simonson, um, his work is just it's just beautiful. So again, he puts in his little Kirby crackle, as these things are called here. And look at this. This is the shield helicarrier as drawn by um, Simonson. Look at this thing. It's just so cool. I love how he puts the um, airplanes like this. Just, oh, it's just so cool. It's massive. It's just, um, I, his, his him putting this in a full, um, basically half the page of this helicarrier. It's really cool. About three quarters of the page, actually. So, um, for those of you younger, they're using a projector, kind of like they do in the movies. Um, although now they use digital, but, uh, he is giving Thor some information. As you can see, he still hasn't really revealed his Thor. It's still kind of in shadow. As, and if you remember from the previous page, he doesn't really show him yet. He is just, he wasn't on the cover. So he is just slowly building. As you can see here, we, we are in six pages and we still haven't seen Thor here. We're in page seven. He still hasn't really put him on. He's, he's in shadow. So basically he's saying that... Uh, there's a ship. They found a ship. This is what I mean here. Look at the star and just just how he... Uh, I just love it. It is something that I continue to do. I imitate this all the time. Imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. And I just love Simonson. He is, like I said, um, hands down one of the greatest. If, uh, if there was a Mount Rushmore, he would be on it. 
Um, he's his. Uh, so um, they need Thor to go see what's going on. They sent the probe, but the probe uh, disappeared, um, probably destroyed. So Nick Fury needs Thor to help. So here we go, and boom! Here's the here finally after after all those pages, he brings in. And look at Thor. Um, this is another trope of his where he signs a page um, during... Um, he normally signs what he believes is, is his best uh, drawing. He actually will sign... Um, in comic books, most artists don't sign their pages. He does, but he doesn't sign all of them. He just signs one panel or one of the... Um, uh, of, or, or like if it's a splash, he'll, he'll do the whole thing. So this is uh, the money shot. And again, look at his art. Just uh, just the movement. The uh, It's just so cool. I love the, uh, how the T for Thor. Like, all right, who else? I wish they would have used this costume. I think this costume appeared on the fourth Thor movie on just a small maybe two second blurb when Thor was young they they put him in 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 this costume for like two seconds if even um so he is heading to see what's going on and then we go to Asgard um uh we don't know who this is yet but you can um there, there, uh, in Asgard, this is Volstagg who appeared in the second Thor movie. Um, he's pretty prominent. The the Warriors Three, as they're called, uh, Balder and Volstagg, Sif. Uh, this is Heimdall up here. I don't know if there's that Rainbow Bridge and there's Heimdall. Again, look at this. It's the sun, the crackle, the the just uh, Simonson is so good. Um, so. Balder is um had died and came back and now he's depressed because he just well when you die apparently you don't you come back it doesn't do much to you but um he is no longer a warrior he's eating all the time and and he's he's portly and and out of out of shape he's not uh he's not the warrior he used to be this is Sif um Thor is a lot more serious than what the movies. The movies, he's kind of like that Joker. He's he's not a Joker. Um, it's one of the things I wish they uh, wouldn't do in the movies. But so uh, Heimdall is here, and Lady Sif is looking for battle. She just she just wants to fight, um, and is looking just for war. And so now again, here's another money shot of Thor. Just wonderful. I mean, l look at this. Just, it's just amazing. Um, Thor finds that uh, ship, and the ship fires at him. He just, I love his composition. I mean, he he just, oh, what a what a just he's a perfect artist um so he's uh fighting and trying to see what's going on um throws a hammer at it uh this wonderful lettering by john workman the hammer would always return to him here's the thing though back in the day if he um he needed to have the hammer returned. Um, we'll reveal it soon in a in a little bit. But uh, he's uh, trying to get inside, and uh, this huge hand comes in. Now, of course, based on the cover, you kind of can guess who this is. But um, and uh, look at this building um obviously that's that's loki here but look at this beautiful beautiful composition just amazing um and loki is very evil um again not 
Marvel based on the shows and the movies is just so much different than than how things are supposed to be. Loki's a bad guy, always has been a bad guy. These people are um hunting trolls and here's a troll. Um and uh this uh woman gets him and um she is uh, Lorelai. She's the sister of the Enchantress. And Loki needs her to make Thor um, fall in love with her. But it is for another... It, he's building, as I said, uh, Simonson is building a, a, a saga. He's building a, his own mythology. And it's just... He's backing a lot into this issue. But... It, he, he, he's setting everything up. Then it, back in the day, um, comics were sort of one and done. You maybe got one or two, three things, but Chris Claremont in, in the Uncanny X Men started building a, a things for the future. And Simonson, um, intentional or not, started doing that and composing these things. He he was he had an idea of where he wanted to go. Um, and he starts packing a lot of that stuff. Uh, meanwhile, Thor is uh, fighting. Um, and here's the reveal. Um, if you take a look um, at Better Ray Bell, he looks like a horse skull, and that is intentional. He wanted him to look... He thinks the horses are the most noble-looking uh, creatures, and, and he is absolutely correct. Horses are just beautiful creatures, and he just wanted, he wanted it to look like a horse, but not quite with the majesty. He wanted it to look like the skeleton of a horse, so his, his face does look like a horse, uh, skeleton. Um, he's confused here, Better Ray Bill, which is his name, um, He's he's confused because he thinks he's one of the Thor is one of those bad guys that he's trying to fight. He he's uh um and so he and Thor are fighting. Um because again, he doesn't know uh, neither one knows that you know, they're there it's basically it's two good guys fighting because they think each one the other person is the bad guy. Um, so Thor right now does not have his hammer. Uh, it was knocked down and, uh, he, Simonson is, is, is making sure you take notice of it. And they continue to fight and continue to fight, um, and fight. Look at this, this, this composition, just amazing. Here's here was a thing of back in the day. Um, if Thor did not have the hammer, which again Simonson wants you to just look and make sure that you know Thor doesn't have his hammer. If he didn't have the hammer within sixty seconds, within a minute, which was what Stanley had said, he turned back into Don Blake. Don Blake needed to make sure Mjolnir was in his hands. Um, or Thor needed to make sure Mjolnir was in his hands so he wouldn't turn into Don Blake. Otherwise, he went back to Don Blake and Mjolnir went and turned back into a stick. If you ever, if you want to know, feel free. Um, Thor uh, in Journey into Mystery, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby um, ironed out his mythos pretty well. Um, but Simonson just took it to another level. Um, but they had established, like I said... Um, the Don Blake, Jane Foster, who was his nurse, um, and that love interest. Uh, right now, Jane Foster is out of the picture. She has he they he's moved on, and um, so Better Ray Bill hits him, and of course he's not Thor, so he gets knocked down. Um, he crash lands. And I just just love the composition. I he just he it's a just amazing work. And he 
wonders. He was looking for the hammer um, and finds a stick. And he just inadvertently hits it. And he turns into a Thor. Not Thor itself, but but all he has now is the is Thor. What made this so freaking amazing is that at that time, no one had ever lifted Thor's hammer but Thor. This is the first time, not Captain America, nobody, nobody. It's the first time anybody other than Thor in 1983, other than Thor, that lifted his hammer. Nobody else had done it. So, Better Ray Bill becomes kind of like a Thor. He throws the at, at Nick Fury, unknowing that um, he just thinks they're the enemy. And uh, it realizes that Mjolnir has now returned to him. And look at this. Look, not just is this an amazing, but just, just Simonson's art is just amazing. Um... And they're just trying to get rid of him. They they think he's a danger. Um, and suddenly Odin appears, and he needs he needs uh, Thor. He cannot tell that this is not Thor. And um, just basically calls for Thor, and. He disappears. He takes Better Ray Bill. And uh, they find uh, here comes Donald Blake. He realizes that Odin took Better Ray Bill and left him and just calls out for him. And this is the end of the issue. Art and story, Walter Simonson. Here's John Workman. Um, we're going to do Thor 338 from 1983. By the one and only Walter Simonson, one of my most favorite artists ever. So as you can see, the logo has changed from the previous issue. And now we have a brand spanking new logo. And this logo remains well into the 90s. And here's the cover, the cover by Simonson. Here's Milner with the inscription. And you'll notice that they're both wearing a Thor costume here. And they're both holding Milner because they're both fighting for him. So, so just like the previous issue, this starts with a hammer and an anvil. And the words doom. Again, we do not know who this is, as this is setting up a story further into the future. And so now on the next page, we begin where we left off. Donald Blake begging Odin to hear him because he took better Ray Bill. Like the previous issue, this is written and drawn by Walt Simonson and lettered by the one and only John Workman, who is just works great with Simonson. And if you all remember, Nick Fury is still there. So now we're in Asgard. And the illusion that this is Thor, of course, three fingers only, so we know it's not Thor, and the color is a little bit yellowish or orangish, and it's Beta Ray Bill wearing a Thorish costume. He doesn't know where he is because Odin grabbed him. Odin now knows it's not Thor. He throws the hammer at Odin. But Odin created Mjolnir, so he can hold Thor's hammer. So 
Odin and Thor are the only two that can hold the hammer at this time. Well, other than Better Raybel, of course, who we just discovered can hold it. So, he wants to know where Thor is. Better Raybel tells him, and Odin encases him until he can find out whether or not it's true. So Odin uses his uh, godly powers and sees that Donald Blake is with Nick Fury on Earth and summons, he, summons him back. He has returned and transformed into Thor without the without the need for of the hammer. So Thor tells him that they were in, in a battle, he frees him, and they go up to the mountain to talk. To see if they can come to terms because Better Ray Bill wants the hammer. And of course, Thor does not want to give him the hammer. Look at this amazing cape. Uh, Simonson also, you can just tell these guys inspired the image guys that would come in later. Here, you can just tell their stuff without having to draw a lot of stuff. So. So Odin tells him that the hammer, no one has been able to lift it other than Thor until now. And he asks Better Ray Bill to tell him about himself. In the meantime, here's Sif. And she hears something. She's Thor kissing Lorelei, whom we met last issue, making her jealous. She reacts by punching them both. And we discover here that it was not Thor, but Loki, creating some mischief. So the origin of Bitter Ray Bill begins. He's, of course, from another uh, planet. And they were attacked, and they turned Bitter Ray Bill. He, ex he volunteered to become... Uh, be involved in an experiment so that he could fight those forces that came into his planet, sort of like Captain America. He went into some kind of experiment. And he was fighting them when he ran across Thor. He said that he won the hammer in uh, combat, but of course he beat uh, Don Blake, not Thor. Thor's reminding him of that. So, as you can, as in the cover, you can see the inscriptions. Whoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. So obviously, Better Ray Bill is worthy. He wants to use the hammer to fight what he calls demons and free his people. So they will uh, go to single combat the way of the warriors meaning till death. And they both agree. So Better Ray Bill is once again himself is not dressed like Thor anymore. The price is the hammer. And off they go to fight in uh, uh, one of the places called uh, Scartheme. John Workman's lettering. Again, just amazing. His special effects. Here's those Kirby dots. Again, Simonson is inspired by Jack Kirby, but he's so much better. hundred times better. You can just look. He he doesn't he doesn't have that blockiness. He just it just looks amazing. 
And as everybody that has heard these know knows that I'm I respect Jack Kirby, just not a big fan. So here we go. They're in this land called uh, Scartheme. And the battle begins. Just, I, I love his composition. Simonson is just, his composition is second to none. Shows you close ups, shows you the land. Um, once again, the close ups. Um, amazing storyteller he is. They're fighting. Thor gets the upper hand. Once again, look how he does. I I I just love the fire, the the way he the way everything about Simonson. I just love how he draws. He's definitely he's he's up there. He is just one of the greatest. I have the artist edition of of this collection as well. Just. Wonderful work. So, Thor had the upper hand. Now, better Ray Bill has the upper hand. So, it's going back and forth between the two. Meanwhile, again, Volstag is trying to get Balder out of his rut that he's currently in. And this, uh, person wants to make a name for himself. He calls himself Agnar. He wants to make himself uh, make a name for himself by beating Baldur. Bald Baldur says he's done with fighting. As you can see, Baldur is being drawn a little bit more portly, a little bit out of shape, because he has foregone. All he does is eat and sleep. Volstag has had enough. And is going to tell him the story of what happened to Balder. It just is so funny. As I um, had shown you before, Simonson loves... He'll, he'll pick a panel that he will draw and put his signature on it. Not very many artists do this, but he does. We go back to Thor and Better Ray Bill fighting... Better Ray Bill seems to have gained the upper hand. Now Thor gains the upper hand, and back and forth they go. Love this use of just showing you what's needed. Um, just the line work again. It's spectacular, very simple, and yet you get the whole picture. Um, they both lose consciousness, and they're about to go down this uh, lava wa uh, waterfall or lava fall. And they're both going to perish. However, Beta Ray Bill wakes up, and he's contemplating leaving Thor, because, of course, the fight was to the death. But he decides Thor is too honorable, and he jumps safely and they both end up in Asgard. And he tells Odin that he has won, and the hammer is his. Thor 339 from 1983. And here, Ray Better Ray Bill on the cover box. And we see a new hammer, Stormbreaker, as Thor and Odin. Sif look on and there is Odin creating the spell and then of course we see the trolls um, there and here as well with Simonson's great signature Simonson one of my favorite favorite artists I know you've heard that many times throughout these videos but truly love Walter Simonson and this arc is spectacular we start where we left off Odin, uh, Odin has rescued Beta Ray Bill and Thor from their fight uh, Walter Simonson 
the the story and the art and the lettering is with uh, John Workman Jr. who he basically is uh, Walter Simonson's letter. Um, he has such unique um, lettering. If you take a look at his S's, you see the S like here in, a, in arouse and silence is look, I have done a pretty good job and copy this S. I so when I letter my uh comic book that I'm working that you can find on Twitter free. I do this for fun, people. So I don't nothing costs you. Um comment life is expensive. I can give you a uh, free story. So uh it's on my Twitter and my Instagram, Art of J Velez, if you care to look at it, or um J Velez sixty two on Instagram. So and uh I also I took a couple of his uh, of his letters. The S is one of them. The E, if you take a look at his E, um, it's it's very, I know you can't tell here in the nice little, but this middle thing, the the middle part of the E is actually closer to the top than it is to the bottom, and I have uh, stolen that as well. So and then the U are the three letters that I took. If you see his U right here. It looks like an L and then an I that just cuts right through it, and that's and so I took the his use. So those are the three letters of his that I. Um, nope, I lied. I took one more letter, the R, and if you take a look at that R with that long, like in like and then right here, so. Those are the four letters. No, no other. I promise you. Just absolutely love his lettering. It's so unique. I hand letter all my comic books, although I do ever do everything digitally. I am hand lettering them digitally. I don't just put in um, any kind of font. I actually create a layer and I letter these these myself each each time. I and so I'm. Uh, I, it's just a traditional way of doing it. Um, I do love digital. I only work digital now, but I still hand letter, even if it's done digitally. Um, I just <laughs> I tried working the other day. I was drawing something on paper and I made a mistake. And I I work on my iPad, so I tried to um, undo, and I was like, Jesus. I, I'm working analog here, so yeah, so I had to um, just draw over it. So whiteout works too, but no, I, I just I I find the iPad just so much easier. Um, so I draw I draw digitally. So anyway, Odin demands that they try to save both of them. They're both hurt and uh, want they. Uh, um, he wants him saved. Just, he is such an incredible artist. He doesn't draw every tree, but you can just tell. I mean, he just gives you enough so you can make a decision. It just, it's so simple, so beautifully constructed. Um, he's heavily influenced by Jack Kirby, but I will say this with my dying breath. He supersedes Jack Kirby in any way, shape, or form. Walter Simonson is an absolute master of his craft. Absolutely love his his work. So, um, here's Lorelai, which we have uh, met previously before. She finds uh, Better Ray Bill to be ugly and doesn't think much of him. She's very um, prideful and very um, in, in the way she is. She's just not a very good person. She only looks at the outside. And uh, Sith is trying to tell her that uh, he's a good warrior, but she doesn't care. She's Like I said, she only cares about the outside. So Odin is here and says that every dog has its day and even Lorelai, but um, he's going to go see them. Thor is, feels disgraced because he lost the fight. He's going to renounce his godhood and um, leave Asgard. 
and Odin's gonna talk to Bill. He says he's not happy either. So just tell him, told him to hold on. Bill feels bad. He, he but he needs the hammer so that he can fight. And they, so Bill comes up with an idea. He says, or just ask Odin, can you help me? And he says, Odin says that he would have demanded a sacrifice. However, he saved Thor and thus he has given him uh, greater gifts. So he will grant him his uh, a wish. So Odin has departed. It's dusk. He sees some trolls or some dwarves here. Um, and they recognize him and he he needs their help um this these are the same dwarves that constructed thor's hammer but they need his help before they can do his task and uh they say that they have a warrior that needs that uh, he needs uh lady sif to um fight him so it's now been two days, and they're still healing, and they see Sif leaving, and the nurse tells him that Sif is going to go fight a champion on their behalf, because of course they will not, <clears throat> he will, they will make the hammer unless she fights their champion. So, we now go and see that uh, Odin asked her but he did not command her and it was her decision but because she's felt like she needs to fight something she figured that this would make her feel better so off she goes when she is uh, sees that uh, uh, big dwarf here and they fight he cuts him he continues, if you remember, we started um, last issue where this guy tried to keep Balder and um, <laughs> he's uh, sort of sitting on him, kind of telling him what uh, that Loki had uh, attempted to kill Balder or actually succeeded and then he, he ended up in uh, Hela's um, kingdom. So Volstag's kind of been telling him what's been going on. And now we are going to stop he this here. Well, not stop the the story. I'm sorry. Wrong wrong choice of words, but we we're, we're he's Walter Emerson is sort of pausing the story here because this was normally in in the first page. I still think he should have put it on the first page, but I he wanted to get straight to the action, but he just a one page. The guy is still working. Uh, with his hammer and anvil, and he is about to hit it again, and every time he hits it, doom. So, again, this is building up to um, a big... There, there's a payoff for all this, all this coming up. And if it wasn't enough, he's setting up something for after this story. So, Walter Simonson is working on all sorts of levels. So, um, it... Right now, it doesn't matter who this is, but um, there's like a rumble, and this creature uh, has apparently freed himself, and he will destroy those that imprisoned him. So, but that's a story at another time. We're going back here where Lady Sif is uh, fighting this, uh, this uh, champion of the dwarfs, and she beats him. And says it's not even worth her time to kill him. And they explain this was actually part of their ruse. He has his name is uh, Throg. And he's lorded over the dwarfs, aided by his freakish size. And he was a bully and making life hard for them. And now that he's been defeated by a woman, he won't be bullying them anymore. So they will make the hammer for Thor. Um, that night, Bill and Lady Sif have kind of a heart-to-heart. -heart. Again, Better Ray Bill is modeled after a horse skull. 
Walter Simonson thinks that a horse is one of the most beautiful creatures, so he wanted to give it some nobility, but at the same time, uh, a little bit disfigured because it is, after all, um, like the skull. You can see that she has feelings or she's developing some kind of feelings, but then they're in the furnaces. They're going to make the hammer. And <laughs> I love the goggles. <laughs> I just. Uh, safety first. Even even if you're a god, you gotta you gotta wear your goggles. So they're heating. They are they are releasing the ore to make the uh, hammer. They tell him he needs to release his enchantment, which he does, and ask Bill to take the hammer and boom Bill is transformed into that Thor like creature their Simonson loves this panel so much he signed it and we get the first appearance of the Hammer Stormbreaker and if you just watched the new Thor movie that came out uh, last year you'll You'll know that that's Thor's hammer. And then that little girl now has Mjolnir. So. And so off they go to. Thor's going to go with Bill to go fight those demons. They said that, you know, they're joining it. Love this panel. Just Simonson, like I said, he's such a master storyteller. Um. He was on point during this time. And here come the goats. By the way, these goats are badass. Unlike that movie, which they screamed all the time, these goats do not scream. These goats are, like I said, they're pretty badass. And Lady Sif is going to go with them and help fight. So... Like I said, these goats are pretty badass, and I, I just, I wish they had not done that comedy bit in that Thor. I, I, I never found it, you know, a joke or two would have been fine, but they really just wanted that movie to be funny all the time. The Mighty Thor 340 from 1983. This, when I was young, so I was, I would have been nine years old when this story came out. And I I really thought they were stuck in a tree or stuck in branches because of the coloring. Um, with this great, this is this actually would have probably looked better white without uh, with just white in the in the background. Um, and then on the corner box we got uh, Stormbreaker and Mjolnir. Beautiful, Walter Simonson, one of my favorite artists of all time we begin with uh thor better Ray, bill and sif kind of finally playing catch up to the um last ship that's what they're trying to do is they're trying to get to the final um ship in this fleet here we have the credits and uh like i said art and story with by walter simonson and the lettering by John Workman. I believe this is the original colorist, but of course it has been re-rendered, so uh, probably the actual colorist of the trade is unknown. So the, uh, Walter Simonson just creates, like I said, he is influenced by Kirby, but uh, I don't know. It, it's it's just beautiful. It's just amazing work that Walter Simonson does I'm always in awe of of his um writings and his drawing the guy's just a top-notch creator like I said he's in my top three he's he's just one of the greats here so um they finally reached the last ship but they um find it that it's been destroyed so they slay the demon demon that's on that ship and then Sif is uh jumping out. 
she's going to, you know, stay there and try to defend the rest of the ship while Thor and Bill fly to get the um, demons. So uh, Thor says she's right, and uh, off they go. The goats again. If you if you only know the goats from the movies. <laughs> these these goats are badass. Uh, that movie, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So in that movie, the goats goats were a joke. But I think the whole uh, Thor movie, that uh, fourth Thor movie, was uh, was a joke anyway. So, all right. So. They're trying to get into the center where all these demons are coming through. And they find that it's not a star, but rather it's a portal. Um, this is a very... Uh, just how Simonson does these... Um, oh, the... Kind of like the corona of the stars, or like when there's energy, just uh, I just love it. Um, I love this thing here. He just makes the marks, just a one continuous kind of like a stream, but each one is really just a um, one of the actual demons in there. It's just amazing how he is able to convey this. Like I said, if you if you're a fan of Jack Kirby, you do see a lot of Kirby. In Walter Simonson's, but unlike Kirby, Simonson's work is not stiff. I find Kirby to be extremely stiff, whereas Simonson is loose. Even though you you see a little bit of the blockiness, um, the two are just not the same. I I I believe this is just my opinion. Walter Simonson is even better than Jack Kirby. So I'll fight you on that if ever. <laughs> so. All right, so the demons are kind of overrunning the our two heroes here. Um, after seeing the portal with the, all those uh, demons kind of flowing here, so they're uh, uh, just love it. Oh, Simonson is such a master storyteller, and John Workman's lettering is just great. Um, he's just the two are perfect for each other. Um, John Workman just elevates a a story. Um, when you when you look at 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 the this is hand lettered by the way. So unlike now where everything is just uh, done digitally, um, he hand lettered these, and just certain words. If you can see that they're a little bit more. Um, to give it, they're a little bit more bold, so to give it like they're they're speaking um, harder, saying certain words. So you see here, they're just, but here you see the back, back, just like with a little bit more emphasis here. So we go back to the um, um. Oh, I don't want to ruin. I almost said his name. Um, so we're just gonna call him the giant for for at least this. So he's continuing to forge um, a a weapon, and as he is forging, these creatures are starting to uh, scurry on out deep within the earth. And of course, every time he hits it, the words doom. Um, show up. Uh, Walter Simonson is building something remarkable. Um, his Thor run is just so, so good. This is one of the best runs ever. And there's a reason that Walter Simonson is at, at the top of my list is because his storytelling is absolutely amazing. He's a fantastic writer and a fantastic artist. Um, <laughs> He is so blessed to be so talented. I absolutely love, love Simonson. So, 
Sif is starting to be overrun by these demons, and she is, of course, going to make a last stand. Um, again, a wave, just how Simonson is able to convey this. Um, he's so good. I, I know you're listening to this probably going, oh my god, he just praises Simonson, but how can you not praise such talented such a talented and gifted writer artist so um so she's like i said she's about to make her last stand when from behind a massive blast destroys the hordes that were um about to take her and it turns out that um this is the ship that uh, beta ray bill came from and his name is scuttlebutt so she um he's gonna help her um he's he's an ai that is going to um try to lead the demons away from the fleet So, to give them more time, and the demons take off, just, uh, he's such a great drawer, oh my goodness, I, I just love, his entire run is so good, um, even when he stops, so eventually in the future, he does stop drawing Thor, because he goes on to X-Factor, uh, to work with his wife, he continues writing Thor, but it's taken over by Sal Buscema, who's more of the classic illustrated comic book artist out there. So it doesn't have, even though the writing is there, the art is a step down because, you know, short sh short of putting Todd McFarlane or Jim Lee on it, anyone else other than Walter Simonson is a step down. Even someone like Sal Buscema, who is also, he's been in the game for a very, very long time, so... All right, so we're back to Asgard, where Volstag is telling Agnar of Baldur's journey through that realm of Niflheim. So if you remember from the previous one, he's been sitting on this poor guy, uh, talking to him about um, Baldur and, and what's been going on. Um, so he sees this creature here. It's called the Nidhog, and it's consuming the dead. And he sees here all the warriors that Baldur had sent there, and it really changed him. I mean, here he says here these were the fruits of his many victories. Seeing all these people that he at one time had killed so essentially Baldur is going through guilt um it's, it's essentially what's what's been going on so um Volstag then goes to tell him both that him meaning Vol, uh, Volstag and Thor are warriors and if Agnar were to hurt Thor or I'm sorry hurt Baldur that they probably would understand and forgive him but, I love this part, <laughs> pompous old windbag here. So we get here to Hogan. Um, not Hogan, like um, Hulk Hogan, for example, but Hogan with a, with a U. And Agnar turns and sees Hogan. He's standing there, and, Vol and Volstagg tells him that um, Hogan, if he were to hurt Baldur, he would never forget or forgive him. So... I think that kind of gets gets into Agnar. Uh, there. <laughs> Simonson, uh, like I said, master storyteller. Look at this. Just the view. Look, I mean, look how he decides to render these panels. Just um, a, a view where we face them. Then the opposite view where um, he faces him, and then a real close up of that of that uh, face with the or forgive just um his choices um 
I, I could brag on Walter Simonson forever. Um, I could make a channel just. I could have just gone through every Walter Simonson ever, but you know, <laughs> there's a lot of other good good stuff out there. So, but Walter Simonson is definitely going to be so um, part of you know this because I can't just show you all these cool different comic books without including Simonson and McFarlane and Jim Lee and Mark Silvestri and all these other talented people. But um, Walter Simonson is by far um, just one of my most favorites. So, all right, you guys are probably tired of me rambling on about Simonson. So here we go. So uh, back in space at the portal, Thor kind of is going to have a plan here. And he's going to... He wants each of them to go to um, a side of the of the portal, and they're gonna throw their hammers together, and uh, it collides with the portal. Um, I love the language that Simonson uses. Um, these these comics if you if you've been reading Thor now um, through Jason Aaron's run and even before you you. Thor and Odin and every, you know, you, you got to move things because, you know, <laughs> uh, you can't keep things the same. These are stories that are, you know, you can only do so much with certain characters. So right now in during these times, Odin is a bit of a jerk, but during this time, he was a loving father. Um, so here, um, you know, there's there's an evolution that happens with with comic characters, um, and you're gonna see. You know, I'm I'm every time I see Odin act how he acts now, I'm always confused. But we'll get to that part later, right here. So, um, aboard Scuttlebutt here, um, they're getting overrun, and Scuttlebutt says that he is going to put his um, self-destruct and give Sif a chance to escape before he destroys. And she she says no, that she's not going to let him die alone. So they begin the countdown, and suddenly, you know, they're at one. And just like in the movies, that everything ends at one, they start to disappear. And she tells him that uh, Scuttlebutt not to, not to destroy. So... Now that the demons are gone, and look, he, he just, just like a firework, just great storytelling. I never would have. Like, how do you show someone disappearing? Well, like a firework. Amazing, amazing stuff. Um, So she's going to ask Scuttlebutt to tell him about Sif. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, she, Sif is going to ask Scuttlebutt to tell him about Bill. So... Now on Earth, Loki is meeting Lorelai, and, you know, it, it, it's a very dense story, so he could only, you know, the, Loki just shows up in, in this half a page, really, here, because it just, you're, he's trying to close up this, his first run, his first arc, um, so he's trying to close it, so he, he can only pack so much, and Lorelai is basically asking, what is he getting out of all this, out of this game that um, that uh, the two are playing against Thor, and Loki just replies that it will amuse him. So Loki is, uh, I mean, people don't realize probably that Loki is a villain. Um, he's always been a villain. He's Thor's villain, and this recent trend because of the show and whatever, trying to make him into a good guy, and that just doesn't really work for me, but um, let your villains be villains and your heroes be heroes, although I mean, like I said sometimes you do a face turn, sometimes you do a heel turn, but you know eventually everything kind of goes back so, we are now in Asgard and a victory parade, kind of as, as the uh, warriors are met with cheers and Thor and Better Ray Bill kind of getting cleaned up. And Better Ray Bill just is kind of sad about having to 
leave and he's just kind of that he can't change you know he 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 does look like the um he he does look the way he does and uh he is uh he is sad to have to leave Asgard even though he's kind of knows that he has to return to his people so um he's found companionship and uh even the touch of a woman's hand so you know they're developing uh, he's developing a relationship with with Sif is what Samson is kind of establishing here and that his own people can't even look at him so um Odin has called Sif and he wants to discuss Bill and so Sif kind of tells him his origin here but it's it's kind of just done in in a uh, little bit of talking a little bit of show kind of here um you know Sif tells Odin um what Scuttlebutt had revealed to her um and that even though his story is true it was not complete and how he had won over thousands of others in a grueling test of power and endurance which is you know what where we're at kind of here and then he had to um go through all these uh, all these poor things these psychological tests that left a lot of them dead and insane and then surgical altercations um excruciating pain um and bill was the only one who survived and the change you know is irreversible uh with the people not even being able to look at him so um you know it's a it's a tragic story worthy of a shakespearean uh, pl uh plot so um at the and i tell you this this kind of still keep going i tell you this story is very very dense here so we are here in a feast where odin is going to honor these two because he actually has a plan um so he's he's going to honor them and give them a gift and he asks them to raise their hammer and he discharges some energy um that hits them both and he he says i don't feel different and he um I like this part here because you know kind of what's going to be happening here. And he says, uh, I had an old enchantment that has outlived its original purpose, which was to teach Thor humility. That was the whole point of um, Donald Blake. So um, he's asked Bill to strike his hammer on the ground, and he now becomes who he was prior to the altercation. So this is what Bill would have looked like. And, of course, Stormbreaker becomes that little cane and he's overwhelmed and uh he says what of donald blake and to which odin you can kind of see that he's laughing um but covering his mouth um and uh just tells you know praise praise the um the heroes so the next day sif decides to accompany Bill, like I said, this this was the start of a relationship, and um, so they they leave, and uh, our heroes here are wrapping up. So we can't end one story without beginning another story. So. Um, near Cape Cod, this uh, tanker um, is uh, going through when a gigantic hand comes out and rips the tanker in two. When uh, this uh, dragon here, he roars to the heavens above to Odin and that he's returned and that uh, he's going to have vengeance on Thor. So... The Saga of Better Ray Bill, Thor, 337, 338, 339, and 340. I encountered this series originally as a trade paperback. I've gone back in the past. I own every issue 
of Walter Simonson's Thor run. However, I didn't start early on Thor. I probably started during the Mutant Massacre era uh, when they did a coverage. I was heavily into X-Men and uh, Simonson had done a cover uh, or uh, had done um, with his run on X-Factor. And then I went back and started uh, buying the Thors back. But I now own every single issue. So I hope you enjoyed the si the saga of Beta Ray Bill. I had taken earlier videos and kind of edited them out a little bit. And put them all into one video for your viewing and listening pleasure. Feel free to follow me on social media if you would like. Links are in the description below. I've also posted a link to the Marvel fan site that I have plot synopsis and character bios for these issues. Like and subscribe. I do thank you for listening. Goodbye.